Hello everyone and welcome again to a new Virtufly video from our premises here in Barcelona, Spain. This is Oscar from the Virtufly Marketing and Sales Department. Today I want to start with a new series of videos about our three touchscreen flight panels. We are talking about the Solo GA, the new General Aviation flight panel, the Solo Airliner and the Airliner Radio Stack. Remember, the RS is for the physical radio stack attached to it. Now, in this video, I want to show you three different setups for all these flight panels. Many clients and possible customers ask us what are the different possibilities to fly these flight panels either at home, at a flight school, university, or anywhere where you want to enjoy these flight panels. And in this video, Whatever you are and whatever you want to do with our flight panels, we're going to show you the different setups you can use with them. Let's start with our Solo Airliner RS with this beautiful setup, which we call the Flight Deck Setup. Now, this is a setup that is used for many types of flight simmers. At home, for flight schools, for high schools and some STEM projects, and for universities, R literally any kind of flying can be done, uh, either if it's domestic flying or professional flying with this flight deck. What we see here is a flight deck structure that has different parts that I'm going to explain you, and then our solo airliner radio stack on top of it with, of course, our flight controls. This palais that you see here, of course, is not part of the flight deck, but we can include it for free if you want. Uh, there's no problem to do that. Now, jokes aside, let's continue with what is included in the flight deck, starting from here. So, this part here that is movable, as you can see, so the actual pilot can use it or a flight instructor can use it, is the laptop support. What you've seen here, this is actually to put on the laptop, on this side for no one to steal the laptop, which is sometimes a big problem that we've heard at university before. So, once you actually lock up your laptop, you can actually put it here with these Velcros that are attached in both parts and you stick it in the support. This way you can see that you can move the laptop up and down and there's no problem to actually move it around. Then you open the laptop and you have the flight instructor using this iOS. So this laptop is used for the instructor station. The best use, of course, is to have it behind the pilot. This way the pilot can be flying and can do exercises while the flight instructor is doing any kind of flight failure, electric failure, changing the weather or anything you can think of. Now, Apart from that, we're going to explain other things. This here that you see is our special aeronautical seat. This seat is reclinable as well, so you can put it up and you can take it to the back like this or up front like a real plane. Of course, as well, you can push it to the front or totally back, so it's totally movable. In terms of the actual structure itself, we've seen the iOS support and the seat. Let's continue with what else there is. Now, the rest of the metallic structure, the metallic flight deck, is composed of the support for the TVs, which is called the VESA support. We also have the support for the flight panels. This uh, flight panel support, you actually have different supports for the airliner, for the uh, Solo GA, you have a support specifically for the Solo A and G1, which are the uh, certified FAA flight panels, and you also have the computer support on the back side. All of it is this complete structure that becomes a cockpit and a flight deck. Here underneath, we have a support for the rudder pedals as well, and something very interesting, which is this height adjuster. So we have two height adjusters. That means that you can move up or down the flight deck as you wish for someone who is short like me or someone who is tall like, you know, any pilot who is taller than me, let's say. Now, what else can we use? Here you have a keyboard support. This is attached, in this case, to 
the flight deck itself behind and you can have a keyboard support for the pilot and instructor. And on the other side, you have the same. If we go to the other side here, you have a support for a mobile or for an iPad, which is very interesting, uh, specifically thinking uh, with iPads that use ForeFlight or SkyDemon or any of these uh, useful applications. For the rest, I think it's everything you need to know. The TVs can be moved, of course, uh, any direction. This is one of the visuals that you can use for the flight deck. We have different visuals. So as you see, this is movable in two dimensions, okay? And there's different visuals, as I say. You can, of course, use a one screen. You can use three screens, which is kind of an 180 degrees. You can even use 220 degree TVs, which are very big TVs that actually cover the complete flight deck. But if you need any more information on that, you can contact us at info at virtual-fly.com and we will let you know. The Solo Airliner radio stack, which is the Solo Airliner but with the physical radio stack on the right side, is an outstanding product because with just one flight panel you can fly more than eight different aircraft. That is single engine piston, twin engine piston, single and twin turboprops and even the Boeing 737. Just touching this button here and you have all the options at the tip of your fingers. That is actually excellent because literally you can fly one model to another in literally seconds. What we see here on this flight panel is of course our Yoko Plus, which is perfectly adapted to the flight panel itself. And you don't need a, an actual clamp to attach it. It's attached to the, to the actual support. And here on the right side, we have the TQ6, the twin engine throttle quadrant, or our famous TQ6 Plus, that can be actually supported in this part of the flight panel or on the right side as there is an extension here because there's different supports for different flight panels. And here below we have our radio pedals which are perfectly attached to the support, to the flight deck, so there's no problem to use them either for the brakes or for the rudder uh, deflection itself. Now, what we see, as I say, the solar airliner here, beautiful and very, very interesting uh, flight panel. It's, outsta it's outstanding because you can use more than eight different aircraft, that single engine piston, twin engine piston, single and twin turboprops, and even the Boeing 737. Everything in just one flight panel. How do you do that? You come to the left here, and where you see the gyro adjustment, you just push to choose the, panel, the flight panel type. It actually says here, that here it's where you have to push to choose the flight panel. Once you have this uh, select panel type kind of screen here, you just have to use your finger, the tip of the finger, to decide what flight panel you want to use. For instance, we want to use, let's say, a turboprop single engine generic. You select the panel and in seconds you have a different flight panel. Now you want to go back to a Beach Baron B-58 you go back to it. Now, you want to go ahead and continue with a Boeing 737. Now, you go to the Boeing 737, you select the flight panel, and in three, four seconds, you have the complete setup ready to fly. There you go. And the other thing that you have to do, of course, is change the aircraft on the actual computer software either if you're using the P3D software or the Explain software. Ask us about the Microsoft 2020. We have many questions about that. We have a very big compatibility uh, document where it states what is uh, working at the moment and what is not. But we are working very hard for you to have these flight panels with all the softwares that are on the market. Now, going back to the Beach Baron here, we're going to explain what we have on the actual flight deck, on the actual cockpit itself. On the left side here, we have the engine start sequence, correct? So you have the avionics, battery, alternators and magnetos. So for instance, you can put the parking brake on and let's start an engine. 
Left engine started, right engine. And we have all the parameters here for the engine um, sequence to see the oil pressure, temperatures, manifold pressure, and RPM. On the left side of the touchscreen, we have the altimeter, OBS, ADF, and headings. And on the right side, we have the complete radio stack. Autopilot, communication, navigation, DME, ADF, and transponder. Now, what do we have here? A panel light for night flying. We have all the lights, the fuel pumps, the prop sink, the flaps. You see how it's selected here. We have the rudder and the, the, the rudder and the and the pitch stream here. Rudder, aileron, and pitch stream for nose up and nose down, which you can also use on the yoke itself. Here you have the indication. And then, of course, here you have different setups, the fuel selector, carburetor, heat, cold flap, auto brake, speed brakes, and our new and strong landing gear. With the Solo Airliner and the Solo Airliner RS, you will have these magnetic tags or magnetic labels, as you wish to name them. And these are the ones that you're going to use once you change from aircraft to aircraft. Of course, it's not the same in terms of procedures to fly a single engine piston to a twin engine piston or a single engine piston to a turboprop or to the 737. Each of them have its own procedures and its own uh, switches and knobs and uh, so on. Now, what we have here of course is ready for a single engine piston and twin engine piston and here we are going to now choose the ones that are used for the turboprop which are this one here we have this one here as well and we have this one here as well and these ones are for the 737 so in this case let's start with the three levels of the turboprop aircraft the first one is for the lights so we're going to go here and we're going to stick it in the light. Once it's stuck, you can see that it changes. We had a pitot heat and prop the ice. Now we have a pitot heat and engine and prop the ice. We also have a wing anti-ice and the light for the turboprop. Then we have the fuel valve, outer feather and FH power on or off. So we're going to put this here and you know before we had a carburetor heat and cold flaps we don't need that for a turboprop. So now we have the two fuel bulbs, we have the outer feather arm and the EFIS power. And the last part is the engine starting sequence which we will put here. Before we had our alternators and battery, we had our magnetos. Of course, we don't need that for the turboprop. We need a battery and generator as well as the, as the engine starts and ignitions. And that's it. Now you are ready to press, go to turboprop and fly whatever single and twin engine turboprop you want to fly. Now, let's continue with the 737. We're going to remove our turboprop labels, magnetic labels, and we're going, we can leave them here, as you can see, or we can even leave them on the right side. So let's leave them there, on the right side, and we're going to use our right side for the turboprop labels. Here we have our 737 label, so we're going to choose our 737 now. And we're going to, going to go ahead and complete the flight labels. Great, now that we have it on, we're going to continue with the magnetic labels. Here we have the fuel valve, left and right, and the both BOR and ADFs. We're going to put that where the carburetor heat and the cold flaps are situated, so there you are. Now, this one, the big one here for the 737, this one is used for this 
left side, okay, of course here we are going to be using the heading, the um, all the FIS and MCP functionalities, so that's right there stuck. The lights, of course, are different on the 737 as well as the pito heat and engine anti-ice. And the engine start sequence, of course, is also different. So we're going to put this here. So you have the generators, the hydraulic pumps, and everything needed for, uh, to start the 737. And there you are. At the moment, we have a 737 ready to take off here at our airport in Spain. Okay, we are turning final runway 34 here at Seattle. And we did a bit of a pattern. It's, uh, it's amazing to see how everything is so responsive, uh, you know, starting from the yoke to the throttle quadrant. But in this case, all the, the, the landing gear, flap levers, to see everything on the on one screen and then all the communication and navigation on another screen, you know, to have all these 180 degree vision for the beam and everything. It's a, it's a, it's a complete new experience. And to have this in a complete flight deck with your own chair where you can, you know, use the rudder pedals without thinking of them moving around and just having everything in one complete turnkey solution is, is a great idea for someone who doesn't have a specific station at home. So, you know, check it out, ask us any question you'd like and uh, we will be happy to, to help you find the best solution. We are now bringing the flaps down for a landing here at runway 34 left, uh, 34 right, correction, on this, on this Beach Baron B58. Let's see if I can butter this landing like my friend David from Air Force Proud 95. David, if you're watching this, let me know if I butter the landing. I think that's butter right there, right? Okay, guys, this is it for the Solo Airliner Radio Stack video. I want to remind you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, which we are going to be posting videos every week from now on. And also uh, press the notification button for me so you can check out when we have those videos released. Make sure to follow us on our social media, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter as well. And I will see you at the next video. Thank you for watching.